Hey y'all, welcome to my channel. Now, that was a clip from Mr. Super Freak himself, Rick James. Now, if you've seen the clip, that means YouTube let it go through. If not, that means I was red flagged. Okay, so this is the story of Rick James. James Ambrose Jr. was born on February 1st, 1948, is better known by his stage name, Rick James, was an American singer, songwriter, musician, and record producer. Born and raised in Buffalo, New York, he began his musical career during his teenage years. He was in various bands before entering the U.S. Navy, reserved to avoid being drafted into the Army. In 1964, Rick fled to Toronto, Canada, where he formed the rock band the Minor Birds, who eventually signed a recording deal with Motown Records in 1966. Rick's career with the group halted after the military authorities discovered his whereabouts and eventually convicted him of distortion related charges. He served several months in jail. Subsequently, after being released, he moved to California, where he started a variety of rock and funk groups in the late 60s and 70s. After forming the locally popular Stone City Band in his hometown of Buffalo in 1977, Rick initially found success as a recording artist after signing with Motown's Gordy Records, releasing the album Come Get It in 1978, which produced the hits You and I and Mary Jane. In 1981, You and I was his debut single. It spent two weeks at number one on the Billboard R&B charts and reached number 13 on the Billboard Hot 100. It also peaked at number three on the disco charts as well. Rick released his most successful album, Street Songs, which included career-defining hits such as Give It To Me Baby and Super Freak, the latter song becoming his biggest crossover single, mixing elements of funk, disco, rock, and new wave. He was also known for his soulful ballads such as Fire and Desire and Ebony Eyes. In addition, Rick James also had a successful career as a songwriter and producer for other artists including Tina Marie, The Mary Jane Girls, The Temptations, Eddie Murphy, and Smokey Robinson. Yeah, I remember when Eddie Murphy called himself singing. Eddie, stick to comedy and acting. Anyway, James' mainstream success had peaked by the release of his album Glow in 1985 and appearance on the popular TV show The 18th. His subsequent album releases failed to sell as well as their predecessors. Rapper MC Hammer sampled Rick Super Freak for his 1990 hit, You Can't Touch This, which won Best R&B Song at the 1991 Grammy Awards. Rick James received his own Grammy for composing the song. By the early 90s, Rick's career was hampered by his narcotic addiction, and he was embroiled in legal issues. In 1993, he was convicted of two separate instances of kidnapping and assaulting two different women while under the influence of the hard white substance, resulting in a three-year sentence at Folsom State Prison. Rick was released on parole in 1996 and released the album Urban Rhapsody in 1997. His health issues halted his career again after he had a mild stroke during a concert in 98 and he announced a semi-retirement. In 2008, excuse me, 2004, his career returned to mainstream pop culture after he appeared in an episode of The Chappelle Show. The segment involved a Charlie Murphy True Hollywood Story style skit that satirized Rick James' lifestyle in the 80s. This resulted in interest in his music and that same year, he returned to perform on the road. Rick passed away in late summer of 2004 from heart failure at the age of 56. In November 2020, Rick's estate confirmed the sale of a 50% stake in his publishing and master's catalog to the Hip Hognosis Songs Fund, founded by Canadian music industry executive and entrepreneur Merck Marquiatis. Rick James was born in Buffalo, New York to Mabel and James Ambrose Johnson Sr. He was one of eight children. He was an altar boy and a choir member at St. Bridges Catholic Church. Rick's daddy was an auto mechanic who left the family when he was 10 years old. Rick's mama was a dancer for Catherine Dunham and later worked as a cleaner in the day and as a numbers runner for the Buffalo crime family at night to earn a living. Rick's mother would take him on collecting routes and it was in bars where she worked that he saw performers such as John Coltrane, Miles Davis, and Etta James perform. Rick later claimed in the autobiography Glow that he lost his virginity at age 9 or 10 to a 14-year-old local girl, claiming his kinky nature came at an early age. He would eventually attend Benton High School prior to dropping out. He was introduced to narcotics at an early age and was arrested for robbery in his early teens. Due to his stints in jail for theft, he entered the U.S. Navy Reserve at age 14 or 15 to avoid being drafted. During that time, he also became a drummer for local jazz groups in New York City. 
Due to his missing his twice monthly reserve sessions aboard the USS Enterprise, he found himself ordered to Vietnam. In 1964, Rick fled to Toronto, Canada. Soon after his arrival, three drunken men tried to attack him outside of a nightclub. A trio of other men came to his aid. One of them, LaVon Helm, was at the time a member of Ronnie Hawkins' backing band. LaVon invited Rick to their show later that night, and he ended up performing on stage with the band. In Toronto, Rick made friends with local musicians Neil Young and Johnny Mitchell. Joni Mitchell, excuse me, to avoid U.S. military authorities. Rick went under the assumed name Ricky James Matthews. That same year, he formed the Minor Birds, a band that produced a fusion of soul, funk, and rock music. In 1965, the group briefly recorded for the Canadian Division of Columbia Records, releasing the single Minor Bird. At one point, Nick St. Nicholas, later a Steppenwolf, Fame was a member. By the time Minor Bird Hip Hop was recorded, bassist Bruce Palmer had replaced him. Rick James and Bruce Palmer recruited guitarist Tom Morgan and Xavier Taylor and drummer Rick Mason to form a new Minor Birds lineup and soon traveled to Detroit to record with Motown. Before the group could begin recording their first songs for the label, Tom Morgan left, unhappy about the label's attitude towards the musicians. Neil Young eventually stepped in and took his place. It was during their time in Detroit that Rick James met his musical heroes, Marvin Gaye and Stevie Wonder. After meeting Stevie and telling him his name, Stevie felt the name Rick James Matthews was too long and told Rick to shorten it to Ricky James. In 1966, a financial dispute in Toronto between Rick and the minor birds, Hensler Morley Shellman, led to Motown's awareness of Rick's fugitive status from the Navy, hoping to prevent any scrutiny, Motown executives told Rick they would not be releasing any more of his material and convinced him to come back and work with them after straightening out his legal issues. Rick James surrendered himself to the FBI in May 1966, was sentenced by the Navy to five months hard labor for unauthorized absence. He was not yet 19 years old. Rick escaped from the Brooklyn Naval Brig after only six weeks confinement. But following another six months as a fugitive, he surrendered himself a second time. With help from his mother, Rick found legal assistance from his cousin and future congressman, Louis Stoke, and another attorney, former Marine, Captain John Bracken, who played Rick's second court martial down from a potential five years hard labor to five months. After his release from Portsmouth Naval Prison in August 1967, Rick returned to Toronto and endured another detention, initially derailing resumption of his career with minor bird bandmate Neil Merriweather, with whom he would later collaborate first at Motown and then in Los Angeles. In 1968, again working under the pseudonym Ricky Matthews, Rick produced and wrote songs at Motown for acts such as The Miracles, Bobby Taylor and the Vancouver's, and The Spinners. According to Rick, he briefly got involved in pimp activity during this time, but stopped because he felt he was not qualified for it due to the harsh activity and the abuse of women there. It was during this third stint at Motown that, Rick's met, that Rick met musician Greg Reeves, hoping to find a better situation than the $38 a week, which is equivalent to $331 in today's money he was earning as a session basis for Barry Gordy. I heard that Barry Gordy was a cheapskate. Greg Reeves joined Rick, looking to hitch a lift from Neil Young's rising star and relocated to Los Angeles. On one of the nights in LA, Rick was crashing on musician Steven Stills' couch. When he awoke, he saw a stone young man sitting on the floor in a lotus position. For those of you that don't know what a lotus position is, it's sitting in the style. The man's wrists were bleeding, so a scared Rick sought help. Rick was later formally introduced to the man who was Jim Morrison, lead singer of The Doors. After the doors opened for Buffalo Springfield at the Whiskey A Go Go, Jim Morrison tricked Rick into taking acid. In California, Rick initially worked as a duo with Greg Reeves, but soon after Rick James introduced Reeves to Neil Young, it was Greg Reeves, not Rick, who was hired as a basis for the newly formed rock supergroup Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young. Around this time, Rick formed several versions of the rock band Salt and Pepper and got involved with hairstylist Jay Sebring, who agreed to invest in his music. Rick claimed that in 1969, Jay Sebring invited him to attend a party at actress Sharon Tate's house, but he was too hungover to get out of bed. The next morning, he learned that J.C. Breen had been murdered when he saw the LA Times headline, Sharon Tate, four others murdered. 
God was with it because if he did go to that party, they wouldn't have never been in iconic Rick James. <laughs>